Um, I'd like to introduce our second presenter. It's Mark Beasley, who's the manager of the Geelong Heritage Centre Collection. And Mark, in fact, was on Who Do You Think You Are last night with uh, Shane Jacobson. So, you know, he, he, now, fresh from TV, here. So, <laughs> thank you, Mark. And he's going to be joined by Ben Carmichael, who's the Digital Co Content Coordinator at the Geelong Regional Libraries. So, we'll hand over to them. Thank you. Um, I got three messages last night after appearing. Um, one was from my staff colleagues here with me saying, well done. It was really good. The second one was from a mate of mine who told me to get off his television. <laughs> and the third one was from my mum who said, I think you should have worn a tie. <laughs> so mum, because this is being filmed and it'll be on YouTube, although she's probably unlikely to find YouTube mum, I haven't got a tie, I apologise. I'm not wearing it again today. <laughs> Um, I just want to touch on, there's a couple of highlighted words there in um, the conference theme which I hope sort of connects with what we present today. They being a theme of collaboration because there's a collaborative story behind this. Um, transformation and just how technology is changing our work and how we relate to users and content. What Ben and I will cover today is essentially the background and considerations behind what we've done what the new technology offer is that we're providing, technical information, when I power finger and pass over to Ben, and if we've got time, some Q&A. Um, a quick show of hands, has anyone been to Geelong in the last five years? Not bad, I hope I can convince the rest of you, and there's a lot of you there to come. A couple of words, Geelong Library and Heritage Centre, wine, really good wine region, great food, beaches. Geelong Library Heritage Centre. <laughs> um, a little bit of background about uh, Geelong. The uh, city of Greater Geelong is Victoria's second largest city um, and the fastest growing region in the state. Geelong uh, has a current population of 235,000 and it sits in the, the major catchment, uh, this is the major catchment of what we call the G21 region. Uh, that includes the regional municipalities of Geelong, Surf Coast, Golden Plains, Queenscliff and Colac Otway. Geelong's economic profile is undergoing a significant transformation from its traditional manufacturing emphasis to a knowledge-based 21st century smart city. It's also a growing university city, Deakin University, and it also has a, a, an increasing tourism focus. This slide there is our now old uh, heritage centre and library. The Geelong Library was established on Johnson Park in 1959. The Heritage Centre was a first floor addition in 1979. We were separate operations, um, although we were physically co-located. Accessing the Geelong Heritage Centre collection was either in person, in the reading room, and only from 2010 was some of our collection um, digitised and made uh, available remotely. Beautiful old reading room there, stunning. From early in 2008, following the completion of the Geelong Cultural Precinct Master Plan, uh, work commenced on a business case for a new fully integrated Geelong Library and Heritage Centre. Geelong's economic profile is undergoing a significant transformation from its traditional manufacturing emphasis to a knowledge-based 21st century smart city. It's also a growing university city, Deakin University, and it also has a, a, an increasing tourism focus. It's slide there is our now old uh, Heritage Centre and Library. The Geelong Library was established on Johnson Park in 1959. The Heritage Centre was a first floor addition in 1979. We were separate operations, um, although we were physically co-located. Accessing the Geelong Heritage Centre collection was either in person, in the reading room, and only from 2010 was some of our collection um, digitised and made uh, available remotely. Beautiful old reading room there, stunning. From early in 2008, following the completion of the Geelong Cultural Precinct Master Plan, uh, work commenced on a business case for a new fully integrated Geelong Library and Heritage Centre. The new Ge Geelong Library and Heritage Centre project became the catalyst for the formal transition of the Heritage Centre from Council to the Geelong Regional Library Corporation uh, and enabling it to become a fully integrated offer in the new centre. Demolition of the uh, 
building, as we saw, commenced in December 2014. Some of the key considerations behind uh, the new technology offer. Um, one of the things we wanted to provide in the new uh, centre was visitors with both with a positive new interactive experience. Um, and that is one of many new visitor opportunities that would add, to, add a new dimension to the experience of the new physical building um, and hopefully meet the, the community expectation of, of, the, of what is um, and was promoted as an iconic new cultural facility in Geelong. We wanted to be able to enable the community visiting the centre increase free access to the Heritage Centre collection in new non-traditional formats that uh, had not been previously available. We knew that the Heritage Centre was going to be exposed to a completely new audience and we questioned how do we complement that traditional collection type display with new opportunities. We wanted to find out what opportunities uh, were out there in a new and an interactive technology sense and could we, explore, what, could we explore them as options. For the project team, one of the key considerations and decisions we made was to try and capitalise wherever possible on using what had already been digitised in our collection. This was in part obviously to reduce the resource commitment required to make it happen, especially given the huge amount of work that we knew we were facing with about 70 other projects uh, associated with preparing for, re relocating into and relocating out of the existing facility and getting into our new Geelong Library Heritage Centre to open. We then uh, wanted to trial the technology, the new technology, obviously. We had to train staff and prepare for the opening of the new Geelong Library Heritage Centre, um, enabling them to understand and to be able to use the new technology offer, and we obviously had to deliver it. So our new Geelong Library Heritage Centre opened in November of 2016. That's the street view there from Little Mallet Street. And that is our new reading room on Level 3. <laughs> Very different to the old reading room. Now, the new technology offer. Two, two new technology offers were decided upon by the project team. The first of those is what's called the cruiser table. A great image there of school children, primary school children with and without their, their teacher interacting with it. We'll talk a bit about that in a moment. Some of the features and content um, of the cruiser table. The Cruiser table runs on software created by Cruiser Interactive, which allows for up to 60 touch inputs per second at once and features an interface especially designed for touchscreen interaction. Using a content management system with this software uh, has enabled us to display the, uh, some of the Heritage Centre Archive collection content in a unique environment that encourages exploration and discovery. The software can display images, documents, audio and video, and can be removed and replaced with other content as needed. What are called touch interactive, um, CSI style, um, can, which can be flickered up onto a screen and can be flickered up onto a screen for viewing, which we'll show you. Relatively simple to operate and inviting the visitor to interact with it and experience it. It encourages visitors, visitors to gather around, uh, around it. Some people will be happy to watch Others will be happy to observe them and then try it for themselves. It's a playful, fun activity, technology toy, that's what I call it. Now, some of the content, and we'll show you a bit of this in a minute. We have images, early Geelong mayoral portraits, um, Geelong and World War I, Geelong tramway network under construction and a map of the tram network as it developed, which is no longer there. Um, we have a Pratt Gallery uh, album which includes um, aerial views uh, taken by a uh, aviator and his friend between 1919 and 1939. We have aerial views of Geelong and the Barwon region. Uh, we have maps, a Google map of the region has been pinned marking locations which when uh, the visitor clicks on them brings up digital content from our collection. For instance, early images of Eastern Beach, Geelong or Lawn on the Great Ocean Road. We have film, historical film from our collection we've converted to DVD. Uh, those films uh, from uh, the 1930s right through the 1960s. Uh, you can email, you can send an image from the cruiser table to yourself back home or to a friend. And, uh, you'll see a bit of that in a minute. Kids can draw on it. They love drawing uh, beards on mares. 
um, from the 1800s who didn't have a beard or putting glasses on them. And I think that's fantastic because they're interacting with it. It doesn't matter how, but they're touching it and they're experiencing it, and that's important. Um, you can take notes. Um, teachers can collect notes, take them back to the class on a USB stick from the table. There we go. There's no sound, but this is a demonstration of the cruiser table in action. Behind is the uh, screen up on the wall. You can see flicks an image, and up it comes, CSI style. Kids love that. And it's a view of the Geelong tram network being built in 1912. Across the bottom of the cruiser table there is flicking across that particular album of images. It's an uh, aerial, uh, aerial view of Geelong and the metadata behind it, so you can turn it around and have a look at the description. See so how you can expand the image, and a lot of detail can be picked up in the size of the image once it's expanded. The description of the Tom Shield up there, up in Geelong aerial album. These are, this is one of the um, digitised films. And that film, again, that can be flicked up on the screen so people can actually watch the film up on the big screen as well as on the cruiser table. And that is a description of all the films that are available there and their, their history and their, the story behind them. There's an example of drawing on the image. And our demonstrator, I think, now is going to save that image and send it by email. So you can imagine a school group and the teacher coming in, identifying an image relating to maybe Geelong and World War I and a story that they're studying. They can actually email that image back to the classroom and take the study back with them and experience it back there, which, which is great. Here's our Google map with the pins on it. Just click on the pin. And there's some images of Moorable Street in Geelong, Main Street. I think from memory that's a World War I, post-World War I um, parade. The reaction. Wow, how cool is this? That's the, how many times I've heard, wow, how cool is this to play with? Um, it's been amazing. Um, the, Heritage, the Geelong Library Heritage Centre visitors, or sorry, the Heritage Centre visitors, uh, since opening of the new Library Heritage Centre in November of last year, um, we've had 63,000 visitors to the reading room. Now, to put that into context, that's 10 years worth of visitation prior. The Heritage Centre digitised content is also accessible via the Geelong Regional Library catalogue. We've had over 12,000 visits to that alone. Uh, who was using the cruiser table? Um, just about everybody. It's really fascinating. All the ages. Um, people gravitate to it, whether it's primary school kids through to um, grandparents. And what actually happens is a conversation starts and they start interacting with what's there. Um, Probably the best way to describe it is that the conversation occurs and, and they start talking about that history and sharing what their experience was or what their knowledge of it was. Um, who isn't using it and why? Um, there are some people naturally who uh, fear the technology and, and sort of stand back and, and uh, don't want to interact with it. But it's fascinating. They'll actually stand there and watch it still. Um, one of the great things that's happened is that people will come in and use it. 
and then they'll come back and they'll actually teach somebody else how to use it. They'll bring someone with them, a friend, and go, you've got to come and have some fun with this. Um, has it worked? Yeah, absolutely. The other offer um, has, uh, is Oculus Rift. Um, it's the second of our uh, interactive technology. Uh, Oculus Rift is a virtual reality technology that includes a physical headset and associated software, allowing visitors to Geelong Library Heritage Centre to experience a virtual 3D world. Uh, the image on the screen is one of 186 stereoscopic images um, taken in the late 19th, early 20th century by a Geelong photographer, G.L. Massingham, and part of our collection. Um, the slide image on the screen there has been adapted for the purposes of presentation using Wiggle technology. Sounds fascinating, but no idea. I thought Wiggles was something else. Um, so we can just view it today, but it gives you an idea. Um, Oculus Rift has provided access to visitors to experience that 3D world, including viewing the digitised uh, scans of the Massingham collection. The reaction, again, wow, how cool is this? Um, who is using it and why? Um, a little bit different to obviously the cruiser table because it is an, an, an individual um, person, just one person using it. So it hasn't been as widespread obviously as a cruiser table which can have 20 and 30 people around it at once interacting with it. Uh, the visitor reaction to, reactions to it, a little bit different to the cruiser table, a little bit, I don't think I really want to go and try that, it looks a little bit new age for me. But the ones who do, people who do, really, really enjoy it. Some of our unexpected outcomes. Um, I've already mentioned it's been an amazing conversation starter. It's become a communal uh, share, memory sharing tool. Uh, in particular, aged care facility groups, elderly people come in, people, uh, members, family, generations of family, perhaps the older, older members whose uh, memory is less than what it was, I really had a wonderful experience with this and you, and you see the, the sharing of uh, collective memory and jogging of memory coming back. Um, Oculus Rift, um, some of the, one of the unexpected outcomes there, it's actually enabled us to identify features in those images that we hadn't seen before, that we couldn't, you couldn't actually detect. Um, buildings in the, in, the, in the background, things like that. Um, the cruiser table's actually become a staff tool um, delivering public programs from it, which wasn't something that we'd identified in the project scope. Um, so there we have uh, sessions on how to use a newspaper collection within our overall archive collection, and the staff are now using the cruiser table and delivering the programs from that. And the image on the screen there was um, from Geelong After Dark, which is a, uh, an annual arts event held on a Friday night in May. The theme of the um, uh, arts event this year was air, and we thought, how can we connect into that? So then we then um, scanned the Geelong aerial images, the Pratt album taken from um, aerial photographer in the, from 1918 to 1938, and loaded them on as a special feature for people coming in that night to experience. And we had 300 visitors in three hours on a Friday night um, between um, five and eight, which was, which was amazing on a Friday night, I believe now, I'm going to hand over to Ben. So uh, in the time that we have, I'm just going to have a look at the uh, process by which we move from the uh, 2D stereoscopic images in physical form uh, to presentation on the Oculus Rift. Now to start with, uh, the digitisation had actually already been completed by the Geelong Heritage Centre uh, prior to our amalgamation. So they had been... Uh, saved out as uh, TIFF files at 300 DPI, uh, which, uh, uh, given um, TIFF's uh, lossless file compression, gave us the most data available in order to uh, make future digital restoration or manipulation efforts, which was useful since we did find that just by uh, digitising the items, they were not yet ready for presentation on the Oculus Rift. We had to uh, address a series of issues such as alignment, colour and damage in order to make it a smooth viewing experience. For example, um, quite a number of the images um, suffered from misalignment. If you were to overlay the left and right hand side of this image uh, over, over each other, as um, the stereoscopic effect would, um, the uh, discrepancy in the position of the ship or the couple in this image here 
uh, would be too great for the eye to easily reconcile. So this was exacerbated by the fact that if you've got several of these images um, being viewed at once, your eye is going to be refocusing to differing levels um, as you move through the sequence, um, causing uh, undue eye strain. It's another example there of the bush being a bit too off-centered for a smooth stereoscopic effect. There's also the fairly standard uh, damage issues that have to be addressed, uh, particularly in a stereoscopic context, such as the foxing you can see of the image in the sky there. It's a bit harder to see, or there. Or considerable scratching and um, damage to this particular image. The reason this is a problem is the stereoscopic effect relies on the overlay of both sides of the image. And when there's uh, differences between the two, that's actually going to be accentuated. You're going to see that damage jump out in front as if that is the foreground and the actual content of the image uh, receding to the background, again, uh, creating distractions for the eye. There's also some colour issues, as you would expect from a collection that's over a century old. Um, faded across the board, as you see here, or in a localised area on the uh, right-hand side. And patches of um, discoloration are also present. So again, these dissimilarities create an unwelcome... Um, it, it takes you out of the experience as you're viewing this in a headset in an enclosed space. It's obscuring detail, which we want to avoid. So in order to address some of these issues, we had to use um, image manipulation software, such as Photoshop, in order to um, create that smooth experience we're after. For example, to solve these alignment issues, we would have to take the pertinent details of the image, the, the main subject matter, and abstract it out from the uh, representation of its physical context, as you can see here. These two images can then be uh, imported back into Photoshop, which would then analyze both sides of the image um, uh, by a pixel similarity and then align it computationally, resulting in something like this. This is the generated output. So you can see that the right-hand side is overlaid over the left-hand side. Simply by rearranging the uh, layers and moving them side by side and uh, cropping the image to create even width and even height so that the centre of the image is the split between the two sides is uh, then appropriate for viewing on the Oculus Rift without that refocusing. Damage issues are also uh, relatively simple to address with um, Photoshop. It's got a suite of tools that allow you to, for example, remove the pinholes that are at the bottom using tools such as the spot healing brush or the uh, clone stamp or the foxing from the sky here or the fingerprints, might be a bit hard to see on the screen, from that image there. Now Photoshop can only get you so far, there's going to be uh, a stage where um, a lot of work is going to have to be put into uh, solving an image like this and then the process becomes one of amelioration rather than complete damage removal. Colour can be corrected using uh, Photoshop's uh, tone curves. And they've uh, got a tool called the uh, uh, Curves Adjustments that allow redistribution of RGB values, the colour that's present in the image, to even out uneven um, color, uh, discoloration, such as here. And also generally enhancing the contrast and the detail of a faded image, such as here. Now, because this was a... Uh, a uh, creative project in order to foster engagement and uh, interaction with the Heritage Centre. It wasn't an archival or preservation focused one. So it did give us the leeway to uh, take a bit of creative licence in uh, casting the image in a new light that, without fundamentally changing the uh, subject matter. So in terms of deployment, uh, we th now have these optimised images and we need to present it through the uh, Oculus Rift using some sort of software. Um, we found that while we were testing um, this process, we came across a couple of uh, programs such as VR Player or Live View Rift, um, which did not quite um, deliver on a smooth interaction that enabled uh, a series of um, images to be viewed at once that can be uh, then just set on a table for patrons to use at their leisure. 
But we did find after the uh, commercial release of the Oculus Rift, uh, support did improve, and we found that virtual desktop is a, a piece of software that we've had the simplest and uh, best results from. Um, virtual desktop just reproduces the screen that you would find on uh, regular desktop and um, creates an environment uh, in, the, uh, in the headset, meaning that any software that you use to view images on the um, uh, regular computer can then be viewed on the Oculus Rift as well. You just have to make sure that the image is full size and that the um, center of the image, like we discussed before, is directly in the middle, the split between the two sides, so each side of the image can be mapped to the opposing eye. So it was uh, this process that we um, took to take a 19th century technology and um, present it in a 21st century context in the um, hope of engaging new, new, uh, new patrons to the Geelong Library and Heritage Centre. Thank you.